now is the time to hear the word. Can we have Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 please? Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. In another translation it says, if you fail in the day of adversity, your, you have limited strength. You have a limited strength, small strength. The Bible says, uh, very NLT says, when you fail in the day of pressure or when you face pressure, if you fail, you have very small strength. You know, it talks a lot of things. We don't need to fail or we should not. That's what God's plan for us. Because the strength and how we fail or succeed in our life, and it's very clearly dependent on the strength that we have within us. Challenge is not a small word or challenge is not an uncommon word for people like us. We all have challenges in life. Pray that we will not have any challenge, but we face one or the other challenge in coming days or we have faced in the past or you're facing it at the moment. It is so natural that we face those challenges. But what Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, you know the meaning of the word adversity is a state of serious or continued difficult time. Just imagine. A state of serious and a continued difficult time. So such times when you face, how big is your strength? Or how small is your strength? But people like to learn from the world how to handle the pressures, how to have a very comfortable life. They talk about leadership, they learn leadership, they pay money and go and learn it. Fantastic, it is good, we need to learn we need to learn about things even from the world in that way. But when we have the word of God, when we have a wonderful teacher, a counselor like the Holy Spirit, it is always good to go back and learn from the word. Let's learn it today. Genesis chapter 49, verse 23 and 24. Genesis 49, verse 23 and 24. The archers have bitterly grieved him shot at him and hated him. But his bow remained in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. You know, these two verses are from the chapter 49. There's a speciality for this chapter. This chapter is all about Jacob blessing his 12 sons. From verse 1 to the last it is a blessing, the prayer, the blessing over his 12 sons. And this particular verse, he is talking about none other than Joseph. But I want to read from verse 22 onwards. I'm going to read from 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him and hated him. But his bow remained in strength. And the arms of his hand, of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. By the God of your father who will help you, and by the Almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors. Up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brothers. When you read this blessing, we understand Jacob is blessing Joseph. If you notice from verse 1 of 49 until the last verse, there is no lengthy and detailed blessing or prophecy about anyone else. Starting with Reuben and with Benjamin the last, when you really look at it, yes, you have a couple of words, there are corrections, there are, you know, uh, talking about what he did in the past. But when it comes to Joseph, 
he is going in detail of his blessings. In these verses, he is talking about his present, his past, and his future. We are going to look at the past. We are going to look at 23 and 24th verse. Joseph is a fruitful tree. The literal translation is, is a fruitful tree. A blessed man is a branch where all the fruit bearing happens. And he is going to spread over. He is going to be a blessing planted by the well. That means he has everything to become fruitful. Everything to become bigger. And the same way as Jacob blessed, he became those nations. You know, Manasseh and Ephraim, the two tribes. Praise God for that. But then he talks about the 23 and 24 to us. Let's look at uh, verse 23, please. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. We did not see anything like that in the life of Joseph. You know, it's a very familiar story from the Bible. We started learning this from the Sunday school. How many of you heard or imagined, or when you read this, never he was taken part in a battle. Joseph was never engaged in a battle, but when Jacob, his father, is praying and blessing, when he talked about his past, he is talking, the archers bitterly grieved him, attacked him. In another translation, it says, attacked him, grieved him, and hated him. He did not take the names of anyone there. But he is taking the life of Joseph from the past. He is referring or he is telling us that it was like a battle. And he is saying that he was hated. He was attacked. He was harassed. People mishandled him. But he did not take the name of anyone there. Jacob knew very clearly who put him in the pit, who sold him to Egyptians, and he did not take the name of his brothers. Jacob did not name anyone there. He knew very clearly by now, I'm sure, that Joseph and Jacob were very close, what happened in the house of Potiphar. And he did not take the name of Potiphar's wife there. And they say, grieved him, hated him, harassed him. No names. How come a life of a person... He is displaying to us when we read this as a battle. Proverbs 24.10 says, In the day of adversity, how big is your strength? If you fail, you have limited strength. But in the day of battle, in the day of adversity in the life of Joseph, we are going to see how he handled it. How he overcame the challenge. How he handled the challenge, the difficult situations in his life. So, when you go through adversity, do not give a name or a face to your challenge. You know what happens to us? We always refer back to the names when we think about the past. Jacob did not do it on purpose, I believe. It was referred as a battle. Something happened. Devil tried to attack. Enemy tried to attack him, harassed him. No names. How about our lives? When we look at our past, what happened? We always bring a name. But you know, this is a good lesson for us. How we need to look at things. How we need to look at these problems in our life. You know, it's, it's really good when we look at it in the New Testament. Paul is talking about battle as, I have fought a good fight. You know, where is this fight coming from? He said, I have lived my life. He said, I fought a good fight. Jesus is telling Peter, you know what? Satan has asked permission to sift you like a chaff. And he is talking about that world, the attack. And Paul is teaching us about the armor of God, spiritual battle, the preparedness. And even here, Jacob is talking about it. What happened in his life? You know, in Joseph's life, if you read it, you know, it's one of the Bible characters, I love to study, I love to meditate, and, and all those things, I claim it for my life. One of the things in his life, what happened, when we think or when we talk about the battle is the pit experience. We're going to talk about the pit, the Potiphar's place, and the prison. What happened? Only the verse 23. How devil mishandled or brought all those attacks. Excuse me, attacks on him. 
So here he's saying, imagine the pit. He was put in the pit by his own brothers. He never expected it. Why I said that? I believe when his father told him to go and check on his brothers, if any experience Joseph had in the past, he would have definitely told his dad that I'm not going to go there because these guys can harm. No previous experience. He happily goes, and when they see Joseph from far, they say, here comes the dreamer. Let's kill him. And God intervened. Reuben says, no, don't kill the lad. And finally, they put him in the pit. First, they took out the coat of many colors. The attack is always on the anointing that you carry, the presence of God that we have. I'm talking about the church, the believers, the children of God. The attack is always coming. God or the, the enemy is coming after the word in you. The dream that Joseph had, they took that off and they put him in the pit and say, let's see what is going to happen to his dreams. And now in the pit, they put him in a place for him to die. You know, if people were passing by, definitely they hear the voice, they can come and pick him up. I am sure that they put him in a far off place where there's no water and it's not going to be food anywhere else. He's going to die hungry. So now, Joseph is in the pit. Imagine what might have gone through his mind. He was cheated or betrayed or tried to be killed by his own brothers. When we go through situations in life, when things happen to us from people that we least expect, when the people or the relatives or even parents or our loved ones or spouse or you name it, but something happens, what will go through? You know, it is not going to affect our physique. It is not going to affect us directly on our body, what is going to affect or where it's going to affect is our mind. You will be completely shattered by what happened. Then again, when you are in a pit-like situation, completely cut off from people and the world, you're thinking that pit is going to bury the plans of God in your life. That's what they wanted. The devil wanted to bury him there along with the plan of God in Joseph's life. But when you go through such situation, when you go through such things, what devil wants in your life, what he is trying to do is he wants to kill the plan of God in your life. He doesn't want you to come up out of the pit. He wants to stay there. He wants you to stay there. You know what happens at that time? Utter hopelessness. And I believe if you are in that place, if I were in that place, I think, Lord, I had a dream. You showed me this. And the very people that I saw in the dream put me in this pit. Did you talk to me the right thing? Did I dream correctly? Did I talk to me? Uh, did you talk to me the plan of heaven? You know, all those doubts definitely will come into our mind. The actions of people towards you can put you in a pit and put you in a place where all the hope of the future will be cut off. Even the faith in the plan of God can get affected because of that. But always remember, no names attached to it. No phases attached to it. It is the plan of God. That's why it says they attacked him, harassed him, grieved him. And the next is Potiphar's house. You know, in Potiphar's house, he grew up in a wealthy family. He grew up as the favorite of his dad, Jacob, a man who had experienced, encountered God, heard from God, has seen vision from God, worked hard and made all this wealth, and he grew up in this family. Definitely he must have heard the stories from Jacob as he was growing up. And he must have taught him the way how God speaks, how God fulfills and everything. Then he was taken out from the pit by the same people who put them back. You know, God can do that. When you are put in a place by people, in a wrong place, God can use the same people to take you out of it or bring you up. 
So now he's in the Potiphar's place. Imagine, when he was taken out, he didn't know that he was going to be sold. He sold to an Egyptian a party, and they went and sold us a slave boy. 17 years. Bible very clearly talks about his age at that time. 17 year old, a teenager, away from family, already shattered in his mind because of what happened to him and who did this to him. And on with a party, you know, they must have traveled around 25 days to reach there, and he was sold. How did he start as a slave boy? What did he do? It's not clear. But Bible says the Lord was with him. And he found favor in the eyes of Potiphar. Bible says whatever Joseph was doing, God prospered. Not only in the palace, it's very clear, even the field. Whatever his hands were on, God blessed him. God prospered him. He found favor in the eyes of uh, the Potiphar. He became a supervisor or a manager over there. Then comes a challenge, the temptation. You know, that he found the favor by God's grace, but unfortunately, a wrong kind of favor he was having from the wife of Potiphar. Temptations on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, he was falsely accused for rape. Just imagine, one is he is in a new land and in a new culture. He was trying to make up things in his life and somehow he made up to that supervisory. I believe when he was sold, he was along with other people. But now he is in an honorable position where his master trusts him big time. But at that time, everything is shattered. Somebody is saying, or somebody, not somebody, the lady of that house, that palace, or that, that place is saying, he tried to come and to rape me. I don't know what Joseph told Potiphar. I don't know whether he tried to justify it is not what happened, or because of his character, he kept quiet. I'm not sure of that. Bible doesn't talk about it. But he was put in the prison. You know, the first thing was the wrong action of people to him. And now the wrong words of people into his life. It is not only the prison experience. He lost the honor that he carried. He lost the credibility and honesty with his master. I'm sure when Joseph was in the pit, Bible says his brothers sat to eat. They must have mocked him. And in the same way, when this fall happened in his life, I'm sure there were people talking, I knew it's going to happen. I know this is a kind of guy who he was. You know, there are a lot of comments, a lot of opinions must have happened. But I'm talking about that person went through that emotional turmoil. How you and I would feel when you go through such things. How you react or respond to a false accusation like that. That's why the Bible says they grieved him. They attacked him. They harassed him. Now finally in the prison. See the first, the pit experience was utter hopelessness but God took him out of it. It put him first place. It was the words that really shattered, crumbled him. And now he is in the prison. In the prison there was no freedom. Yes, he found favor. But there was no freedom physically. Remember, he has a dream. He dreamt the plan of God in his life. So from the age of 17 until the age of 30, 13 years, he was going through this ups and downs. He was a young man, but Bible says God was with him. But when you go, when he goes through this pit, the Potiphar and the prison experience, what happens in his life? How the challenge, how he faced the adversity. How unlimited his strength was within him. That's what we are going to look at. You and I, when we face this challenge in our life. When people come and talk to us, or people when they don't talk to us the way we need it, how would we respond? In the office, at home, with our siblings, how things are. 
Are you still keeping those faces, those names in our heart and saying that, you know, they did this to me? But how we are going to win the battle? How we are going to face those challenges in life? Let's look at verse 24. But his bow remained in strength. See, this is a key. How? But he was strong in the Lord. And the next verse, the part B of that verse says, by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. You know, Joseph was in the presence. He was strong enough to handle everything that was happening in his life. But how? He was not a part of a church. There was no community of believers or Jews at that time to worship the Lord. But how did he manage it? Never in the Bible, in this life uh, story of Joseph, he mentioned about how Joseph prayed. You know, Daniel, we saw it in every other, you know, chapters or passages. He, but here, we do not see it. But how do we understand or how did Jacob know in the Holy Spirit, but his arms were strong? You know, when the lady kept on tempting him, he said a word, I will not sin against my God. I will not sin against my God. You know, that is the value, or that is the presence that he carried in his life. And I'm sure that as I was saying, he must have heard the stories of Jacob having that encounter in Genesis 28. How he worked and how things went, how people treated him or tried to cheat him. And this boy, in his younger years, when he was in that foreign land, when he was being tempted by that lady, and he said, I will not sin against my God. That is how I believe the Holy Spirit picked up and said, he, his arms were strong. And because he kept the commandment of God, because he kept the presence, because he kept going in the ways of the Lord, God also strengthened his hand. You know, when we overcome, or when we go through challenges, we need to be strong in those areas. How is our value system? Or how am I taking care of those people? How am I reacting or responding to the situations when people talk to me, people act weirdly, or in an evil way, or put me behind bar, not literally, but many people, because of the actions and the words of someone, still imprison themselves in prisons. They are still bound. They are not free. Why? Because somebody told something or somebody did something to me in the past and I am there. But you know what? I have the great dreams of God in my life. I have the plans of God in my life. But you know what? That thing, it is still killing me. Those brothers who tried to kill me, those lady who falsely accused me and I was put in this prison not for that mistake, but you know what? Nothing good is going to come out of me. If that is how or that is what we think the good news is, we are in a battle and our God is with us and the Holy Spirit is in us. He is going to work with us to come out of every challenges that you and I face. Hallelujah. And it says, when he was in the prison, one thing he was always, you know, though we don't see the way he prayed, but we see the effect of his prayer. So we don't directly see he prayed, but the, when he said, I'm not going to sin against my God, I believe that is a fruit of his time with God. Hallelujah. And in the prison, when he found favor in the eyes of the supervisor, he was in charge. And one day, Bible says, when he saw the baker and the butler, he looked at their face and he asked a question, what happened? Why are you are looking dull or sad? You know, people in prison, imagine the situation, falsely accused, put in the prison, but he is still checking on others. He is chill. He is still going ahead and asking people, why do you look so sad? What happened to you? 
You know, I believe this is another sign of his prayer life. One is his commitment to God. What I do and what I should not do, he was very clear. The second thing is his action of taking care of others. Why do you look so dull? That tells me he was a man who still believed that one day God is going to take me out of this prison and I am going to see the fulfillment of the dream. But even if I am in this prison, my charge sheet is still there. It is not cleaned by anybody. I don't know when it is going to happen. But even in this, I am going to do what God wants me to do. See, when a man tried to do the things of God, The 24th verse, his arms were strong, and by the hand of God, he was strengthened again. Hallelujah. You know, when you take a step, when you take that step closer to God, I'm sure the Bible says God is going to come. He's already in us. You don't need to come near. But our actions, our commitment is going to make us stronger relationship with God. You know, you need to understand that word, When you fail in the day of adversity, you have limited strength. Now the question that we need to ask, how am I inside? Bible is talking about when there is a limited strength, that means there is an unlimited, there's a possibility of unlimited strength inside of us. The something is limiting the strength within, but what does that limiting me? Or what does that thing really imprison me? Why am I still inside those hurt, those people, or their actions? But what about the plan of God in my life? You need to understand why God called you. Or even if you don't, not very clear of it, you need to know that he has a plan for us. You know, Bible says when he became the prime minister, when he saw his brothers came to buy food, Bible says like he remembered the dream. What he tried to do after that, he struggled with revenge. He struggled with all of that. But always those dreams were in his life. When you see difficult times, you know, it is not a pleasant sight when you see your enemies or so-called enemies or people who did harm to you come in front of you after many years and now you are in a position to do anything you want to them. Usually how we react or how we respond but he kept quiet. He tried, but eventually he understood that he is telling, when he revealed himself, he says that you did not sell me, but God sent me. You know, this is coming from his commitment to God. This is coming from his prayer or the way he was taught by his father. And I believe that's the reason he said, I'm not going to commit a sin. I am still going to check on people. This is what I'm going to do it. And he did the same when he came out of the prison as a prime minister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you and I need to do in the time of adversity. You know, choice is always ours. He can sit and say, yeah, but still he said to the cup bearer, remember me. It is not my fault that I am here. But he said that, you know, there is a human side of it. But I believe that he was more dependent on the plan of God, on God. And that's the reason that God took him out of it and put him in that place where he was. And now when Jacob is blessing his son. And he's saying, you are a fruitful tree. You're going to be a blessing. Your tribe is going to be a blessing. I know your past. The Holy Spirit knows your past. You know what? That was a battle. They really tried to kill the plan of God in your life. You know what? But you stood and God made you stand. You know, in our life, when we go through these adversities, you know, sometimes the hurt inside, this is a time to release those things. God is going to work in our life. I'm going to pray and God is going to do that wonderful thing in our life. And if you are still in prison because of someone else's action, God is going to release that today. You know, we don't need to be there. We need to be where God wants us to be. We need to be there where God is going to use us. Hallelujah. When you and I walk into the plans of God with the decision, That, Lord, thank you for the dream in my life. Whatever comes on my way, I'm not going to stop believing that it is over. 
I am going to believe that you are going to come and I am going to walk with you even if I don't see anything happening in my life, but I am going to walk. Hallelujah. He made Israel come back, settled in Goshen. Centuries they stayed there. And even now, this country is there. Hallelujah. When you and I stand in the presence of God, when you and I face these troubles, the adversity, the serious or continued difficulty in your health, continued difficulty at workplace or business, continued difficulty you're facing with people in your life, relationship, finances, anything that you think that be there and continue to live a life with God and He is going to unleash that unlimited power within you to bring that man or the woman that He wants you to be. Hallelujah. James chapter 4 verse 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, we saw from the life of Joseph, you know, bits and pieces. There is, there is a lot of things yet there. It is not what everything about Joseph. You know, some things that we need to understand. And now we are going to see how we will overcome, how we will not fail in the day of adversity. And I know there are many things we praise, we worship, use the word, we prophetically, everything is there. But we are going to look one of the things here. In James 4, 7, it says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I said, it is battle. In a New Testament, when a believer's life is compared to a battle, you're on the battle fleet. Jesus mentioned about it. And Paul taught about it. And now James is saying, submit to God, resist the devil. You know, two words, submit and resist. What is the meaning of submit or surrender? Willfully surrender everything you have, everything you think into the hands of God. So when you decide or if you decide to take revenge, or if you decide to pay back for things that happen to you, or if you're going to pay back in a way by words or actions to things or people who did this to you by their words and action, you're not surrendering completely yourself into the hand of God. When the submission, I'm talking about the submission in the family, submission in the church, submission in your life, in every areas of your life, a willful submission of everything what you think will work in your life. Your ideas, your plans, and you're not allowing God to work in and through your life. And if you don't surrender and submit those things which you think is going to work for your life, the devil is going to be there around and he's going to harass you. He's going to work against you. I'm telling you, he cannot touch, but he cannot delay things. Hallelujah. So when you submit yourself, what is going to happen is we are resisting with all the force that we have. You know, with our prayer, with everything what we have within us. Remember, 2410, the strength that we carry the power that we have in Ephesians says the, the potential is enormous. The same spirit who made Jesus come out of the grave dwells in us. And we are talking about experiencing and relating with that power of God to resist the devil. Hallelujah. The understanding of that power within us that will make us resist every plan of devil. Our prayers, our praises, our proclamation of the word, with prophesying against, standing in the gap and praying, and all these things will resist every advancement of the enemy. And the next verse actually says, draw near to God and he will come near to you. You know, he stayed in the course of God, Joseph, and his hands were strengthened by God. And when we come near God, when we go closer to God, and we know we will experience, it's not that he's not there. We will start experiencing his presence in a much better way. Hallelujah. You know, in, in our life, when we stand in the presence of God, 
When we pray now, coming to church, worshiping the Lord, reading the word, understanding, believing, proclaiming, these are all the ways that we are resisting. But without surrendering the things that we have in our mind, things won't work. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Read it again, third verse. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. You know, Jacob mentioned about a battle. He did not mention about who. Here is saying, yes, I'm a human, but I don't war or I don't resist according to my flesh. I surrender everything of my flesh. I surrender everything of my ideas, all my plans, and I am going to surrender. But what am I going to do? Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare or the weapons of my warfare is not of the flesh. It's not human. It's not my ideas, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We only talked about resisting. But Paul is explaining this. is saying, you know, this is divinely powerful to destroy the fortresses. We are not talking about now resisting it. We are talking about destroying the plans of God. Starting with the surrender. Starting with submitting everything. And the realization of who we are plays a vital role in this. I know that though I walk in the flesh or oh, who is in me or oh, what I carry is not human but it is heavenly and it is powerful and with that I destroy the fortresses or I destroy the strongholds the strongholds is in the mind not talking about the literal building we are talking about the strongholds we are talking about the next verse verse 5 We are destroying, you and I are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. We are destroying speculation. We are destroying every negative thinking against the plan of God. Every thought in my mind, speculation is every thought in my mind which is against the plan of God. You know, Joseph, while he was there in the prison, I believe that a lot of things might have gone through his mind. When we go through this, when we face the challenges, the speculation, negativity will come and it can overcome and that can become a stronghold in our mind. And we are going to destroy the speculation and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God or the plan of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is how we resist the devil. This is how we will be on an offensive mode when it comes to the devil. When it comes to every attack, when it comes to every problems that we face, this is the way we do it. As he was strong enough to withstand, he was strong enough to advance, you and I are strong enough. We have the Holy Ghost in us and we are divinely powerful because of him who worship and we are going to destroy every fortresses and it starts in your mind and it starts in your mind where is your strength in the day of adversity a continued difficulty or a serious problem that you face you've been praying for it for a long time it's not changing you feel it as a big wall in front of you. The prayer is not working. You're not seeing a breakthrough. You're not seeing a growth. You're not seeing the baby you're looking for, praying for. It's not happening. Things are not happening in your marriage. But those fortresses are going to be destroyed by the divine force that is within me. The experience. Maybe you are in the pit. Or falsely accused. Or in a prison. Or you think I don't have the strength anymore to live a life like this. I'm done. I don't want to come out of the prison. 
and we are sitting and blaming others for our condition but bible says our weapons of warfare is not carnal but it is divinely powerful to destroy the fortresses hallelujah can you rise up on your feet i'm going to pray you know i was praying god put something to pray for god is going to pull somebody out of the pit today when i say the pit a pit of utter hopelessness you know you think that your life is over you think that nothing good can come out of you or nothing god nothing good will come to you nothing good will come out of you god is going to change the situation in your life when you start surrendering those hurts when you start submitting and start forgiving the people in your life saying your things are going to work in a much better and a faster way in your life do not let the devil hold on things because of our reason God is almighty you're blessed spiritually you're seated in the heavenly places you are sitting with Jesus amen praise god that's a spiritual truth but the areas where you're still holding on is actually keeping you where you are it is not allowing you to progress but what we need in our life is that advancement destroying and we need to go keep going forward You know Joseph went and checked with those two people how are you doing and later he was put in a place that he was taking care the need of a nation and other people also came those humble beginnings starts with coming out of that hurt coming out of where you are if it is if it takes to forgive someone if it takes to ask forgiveness or apology to somebody do it it is for you and it is for the kingdom of god that healing is going to happen that miracle is going to happen and things are not going to be the same hallelujah let's pray lord we thank you holy spirit though we are human we have the holy ghost in us Our weapons of warfare is not carnal but divinely powerful. Our prayers are powerful. When we speak the word it is powerful. When we pray in the spirit it is building us up to pray, speak and stand and withstand against the onslaught of the enemy. I pray that realization will come into all of us here today, Lord. If as anyone is in the pit they think yes, i'm going to be buried in the pit amen the dreams of god the plan of god is also Hallelujah. going to be buried with me in this pit lord i pray for a change in the name of jesus yes in jesus name let there be a change in their situations amen from that utter hopelessness let us come to a place of full of hope not only for them but people around them lord amen every false accusation every negative word spoken over people Lord people are in prison because of those words. I pray the power of God is going to release those people from those prison doors in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Breaking all those chains which are actually in the mind, those strongholds. Lord as the word says, the power of God, the words that I speak is going to destroy those strongholds in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Baba. Lord I thank you. We are a fruitful tree. Our branches are running over the wall. We are planted by the well. We are bearing fruits. Hallelujah. We thank you Lord. We will say in the day of adversity, we will not fail because we have the unlimited power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. 
Yes, Lord. I pray for strength over people. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah.